Hey everybody, it is Resurrection Sunday, Incredible. and we are beginning the Thematic Podcast Season 3. Yeah. We chose to start it, we put it off a whole week, actually, we are going to start last week, we chose to start it on Resurrection Weekend. Fitting. Yeah, because- Where everything starts. Yeah. We wanted mm-hmm. to uh, talk about what is the most central uh, moment in all of history. Yeah. And the All most of centra- time is divided. All of time, yeah. And the most central act of love. The greatest yeah. act of love in the history of humanity. Yeah. And so we thought we would wait till Resurrection Sunday. And I did get this question. I'm sure we could add a couple of questions and have some yeah, discussion on this. Sure. But I actually did get this question from at Wildcat1981 from TikTok. And they asked this, I'm a beginner learning the Bible. I read that Jesus didn't come here to die on the cross for our sins. Why was he sent then? Interesting. Yeah. I don't know where you read that. Probably, yeah. probably some sinner wrote that. But um, so let's let's talk about this. Did, did Jesus come to die on the cross? Uh, yes or no. Did he come to do more than that? Mm-hmm. Yes or no. And, and then I would hope to get a little bit further deeper in terms of. Mm-hmm. So, yes, he did come to die on the cross. Why? Mm-hmm. Why did he need to? Yeah. Why was a death sacrifice necessary and what That's a great question. and what else might have been accomplished in that week you know with the whipping and the beating yeah and the the death the burial the resurrection yeah all of it so i don't know how much we can get through in yeah. 25 minutes We're gonna, we need to go fast okay. yeah so so um the bible says in leviticus that the life is in the blood mm-hmm. so when something gives its life it, it, that that life is literally contained in in the blood somehow. So scientifically, I'm not 100 percent sure how that works. I'm sure there's a correlation, but the Bible says that it is. And so, um, when we say in Christianity that Jesus shed His blood, that is a colloquial way of saying He gave His life for us because mm-hmm. His life is in the blood. And so, why was a, a sacrifice required for sin? Well, that was set up by God the Father in the Garden of Eden when Adam and Eve had sinned. God Himself, excuse me, um, He he created animal skins. And so those animals gave their life as a covering Mm -hmm. for Adam and Eve when they knew that they were naked and they felt shame because of their sin. So that was where it was established. So God sort of sets the rule. The word atonement Mm -hmm. is, is the word to be covered. To be covered. Correct. uh, What God did in the garden for them was he atoned them. He covered them and they tried to cover themselves with fig leaves. leaves, He covered them with animal skins, which required the death of the animal. Correct. So that's where it was established. And so all of our disobedience and all of our sin, anything that falls short of God's glorious standard, like it says in Romans, is sin. Anything that doesn't come from faith is sin, right? So we are separated from God by our sin. And what is required to reconnect us is a perfect sacrifice to atone or cover those sins so that we can be with God in his presence completely again. Right. So that's the reason. And, uh, Hebrew, even the New Testament emphasizes this in Hebrews 9.22. It says, without the shedding of blood, there can be no, no forgiveness of, of sins. sins. Mm-hmm. So we see this uh, this model, or for, for whatever reason, the, the, this is how God's reality and economy works from the very beginning. And so what you see throughout the, the whole Old Testament is that the people were commanded to bring these sacrifices. Yeah. And it was, there was a few things like it'd have to be the firstborn, have to be, you know, without blemish or not genetically yeah, not pure, s- not like your, not your na- worst nasty lamb. old lamb. This lamb has yeah, oh, six years. One, we're not going to use it for anything. Yeah. yeah. I don't want to eat that nasty guy anyway. <laughs> <laughs> like, <laughs> little nasty guy. <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah. So yeah. the idea was to bring your best your to best. God. Yeah. And then, yeah, there was a death that was required. And as I understand it, um, the, you know, the, the priests were really there to facilitate what would take place. And of course the priests did a lot specifically taking up the blood, but the actual death, as I understand it would be, I would bring my lamb, put it on the altar. And then I had to put my hand on its on head. Its head. Yeah. And then I had to take the knife and cut the throat. Imagine how much less sin we'd have and less, you know, transgressions we'd have if it really did force our hand to cost something its life. Right. You when you're yeah. yeah. I mean, can you imagine I can't even imagine like hitting a you know, hitting a dog. Like yeah. let alone the animals living in front of you. And and that's the thing is like it's 
it's deep. You feel it. You feel the weight mo- of it. You would feel it. Yeah, the weight of it. And you're yeah. and the my your hand sin on the head, cost this innocent thing its life. And that is the picture. That of is sin. the picture. Yeah. Yeah. Putting the hand on the head is a sign of saying, I, in a sense, I'm transferring, transferring my him. sin to this animal, and then my hand is, I'm recognizing it's my fault that this has to happen. Correct. And so that's how I understand it as well. This this same pattern goes all throughout the Old Testament, and this is why when Jesus shows up. John the Baptist says, that's the Lamb of God. Mm-hmm. That's why Jesus we'll is called the, the Lamb. The yeah, yeah. So this is why he's called the Lamb of God. Yeah. Because he is, he himself is the sacrifice. Yes, correct. So it, in, in a very real way, when he died on the cross and was pierced and nailed, it, it was our hand, every one yeah, of us. It was correct. our hand that was doing that to him. Yeah, powerful. So did, so did Jesus come to die on the cross? To yeah. answer the question directly. Yeah, he did. Okay. Mm-hmm. Did he come to... And it was for the joy set before him oh, that he endured the cross. Hebrews 12. Scorning its shame and sat Scorning down at shame. the right hand of the throne of God. Yeah. Yeah, you were the joy set before him. You, yeah. So so let's not divert from this topic, but just real quick. Did he come for other reasons as well? Did he come to show us yes, a way he, to live? He, yeah, he Show did. us what the ultimate human ought to look like? Yeah, or, for sure. There are lots of ancillary benefits, but his primary mission was to be born, to be the perfect sacrifice, to reconnect humanity with God. Yeah. His choice, too, even more powerful. Uh, sen- uh, he could have prevented it. He, he could, who could have prevented Jesus it? Jesus could have. He could have chose. It was his choice. He said, nevertheless, not my will, right, right. but yours be done. Is there any other way? Is there any other way? Can, can we yeah. accomplish this in any So way? that struggle in the Garden of Gethsemane proves that it was his choice and it was a tough choice to make. Also, when he stood, it's only mentioned, I think, in John, where he stands for, his steps forward and everyone falls, proving that, like, no man takes my life, I give it freely. Like, he didn't mm. have to be bound and chained. He right. allowed it to happen. He allowed it. He, he could have, that, yeah. Could have called the Legion of yeah. Angels. He it's stayed true. silent true meekness he had the power to prevent it and chose to go to his death for you for me it's, yeah i mean it's absolutely like god's um opus his magnus opus mm. of love for us the highest expression and there's a significant passage i think significant wording in second corinthians 5 that says god made him who, who knew, knew no sin, sin not just to feel your sin to take on your sin to, to become. become sin for you so that you might become the, the righteousness, righteousness of, of God, God in Christ I Jesus. implore you on Christ's behalf to be reconciled to God. And so what God did so through good. Christ is he reconciled. That's, that's two things that are broken and separated. He reconciled us to himself mm. in Christ, not counting men's sins against them. It says in uh, Colossians chapter 1. Come so, on, dude. Oh, we're getting <laughs> so thema- good. Oh, we're getting thematic Man. now. Oh. This, is, this is automatic. Res- okay. Resurrection Sunday. So... So yes, this is this is I mean this was planned all throughout history. And, that, and and why Jesus is called the second Adam because in 1 Corinthians 15 it says so death came through one man's disobedience so all men are made righteous through one man's act of obedience that's Jesus. Mm. So it's like death entered the world through a decision of one man and now life enters through the decision yeah. of another. It's super beautiful. Yes. So Jesus came for this purpose. I would say to the whole purpose of reconciling us back mm-hmm. to God. Yes, correct. Um, that includes forgiveness. That includes salvation, you know, all those things. But just just for the record, salvation is not just something that starts after you die as a human being. Mm-hmm. Salvation begins right now. Yeah. Right? The moment you yield your will to him and commit to him. Today is the day of salvation. The yeah. And John 17, 1 says, and this is eternal life. Yeah. That they might know now. the only true God in Jesus Christ whom he has sent. That starts now. Come on. So he he uh, he came for this reason to die. Now, Daniel, if Jesus was fully God and went through everything and died on the cross, but didn't raise from the dead, would it have still worked? I don't believe it would have worked. He wouldn't have been able to conquer death, which is the ultimate enemy, because death is the wages of sin. So he lived a perfect life. He, um, according to the law, and even beyond the law, like he lived it by love, right, 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 right? right. and in so fulfilled all the law and all the prophets, right, and then 
surrendered and sacrificed his life as a choice. And then in this is the ultimate act of humility. Most people don't recognize this when he's on the cross and he goes, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? It's the only time in the Bible he calls the father, my God. He it's not dad or father, right? It's not. Um, mm -hmm. It, he senses a disconnection because in that moment he becomes sin on our behalf. Mm -hmm. He had had full connection with God up until that point. Mm. And the moment that he f senses that disconnection from God, he really is at the complete mercy of the father's promise at this point. He's going to go into death knowing that only God can raise him. Mm -hmm. And so, um, wow. imagine those moments for him. Yeah. And so when God, um, through the Holy Spirit, because the same Spirit that raised Jesus from the dead lives in no, you once you're saved. When the Holy Spirit quickens Jesus back to life, that is the moment that death is conquered, conquered. and it is complete. Yeah. And that's what gives us that resurrection is the receipt, the proof that we will have life eternal. That's why it's so powerful. Yeah. Do you believe that the term, the cup of the wrath of God was that he drank the cup of the wrath of God in that moment? That's a really good question. I do think that um, that's likely. Yeah. Because he drank, cause in he drank the garden, it in full. In the garden, mm -hmm. he says, if there's any way that this cup, cup. can pass before me. Yeah. And so anyway. That's where I get it to. So just to be clear, there's a cup of wrath that God has that that gets filled up and, and he has to pour out at some point. And the idea is that Jesus drank it in full. So there's no wrath remaining like, for yeah, us. In that moment, he yeah. took on everything. Everything. So yeah, I always, I, I mean, the cross in, in at least Christianity as we know it is the symbol, right? It's the it, symbol. It's the, it's the pinnacle of what we believe. Um, and I, and I believe that of course, like the, the cross was absolutely 100% necessary, but it's kind of like, you can't separate the two, the resurrection. I mean, Paul says in first Corinthians 15, if, if not for the resurrection, then we're to be pitied among men. Like yeah. none of this, right? So the resurrection is 100% was 100% needed. And so like, I, you know, I believe that what Jesus accomplished on the cross was our salvation, our forgiveness, our atonement, the, the atonement, the the covering, the the reconciliation, but he, pr but it was proven through the resurrection. Yes, right? correct. And so he raised. So we, that's why it's so important that we believe that Christ was raised from the dead. Yeah, you know, and that we will be raised mm -hmm. as well with yeah, him. Yeah, absolutely. That we will be, we will be with him in glory. Yeah, we will. So okay, perfect. That's that's all real orthodox. Yeah, good theology there. Yeah, so that's let's jump into a, a little bit deeper theme, which. Um, you know, maybe people don't talk about as much sure. and, and, and to be, just to be transparent, I even, I don't think I even really thought about this until I heard it from you, Daniel, mm. the idea that in the passion week, which would have been, if you don't know, just kind of like from the last week of Jesus's life, the triumphal entry until, you know, basically his, his death, yeah. um, a few things happened Yeah, and you know, he was arrested. He was, he, denied by Peter, turned over by Judas, arrested, and mm -hmm. then put on these different trials, okay? And then and then there was this whole proceeding before the cross, before his death, where he was beaten, mm -hmm. okay? And that was a, a really, I mean, Roman thing to do, yeah. for sure. Yeah. But it wasn't a biblical thing to do in terms of God's way of sacrificing an animal. And so yeah. was it just like, like oh, an animal would never have been beaten under the Levitical law. Yeah. It so, would be treated really well and killed quickly without pain. Right. That's, so why did Jesus have to suffer the way that he suffered? Did he really have to? And, and so, if he did, why did he, and what did that suffering accomplish? Yeah. So I believe it's one of the most moving and precious parts of Jesus's sacrifice. It meant, I mean, it's one thing for someone to sign up and be like, okay, I'm, I'm, they're going to put a needle in my arm and put me to sleep and I'll give my life and there won't be any pain or I'll quickly just have two seconds of right. pain and it'll if be over. If there's a humane way of, a humane, of taking yeah. a life, it's quickly, yeah. it's... But to prove Jesus's love for you, not only did he sacrifice his life, I believe in the way that I read it is that he offered his flesh and he uh, he allowed himself to be tortured um
so that you might be made whole. He allowed his flesh to be torn apart so yours could be made whole. And so here's here's maybe a way to look at it. And I, I believe this is true. And if it blesses you, maybe you can ponder it and ask the Lord if it's true and see if, if he reveals it to you. But this is how I love to see it. Jesus goes into the Garden of Gethsemane. The Bible says he's in such duress and such stress that when he prays, he sweats. And the Bible says his blood mingles with his sweat. Mm -hmm. um, there's some great scientific articles, yeah. maybe we can link below, that talks about the capillaries bursting and how much stress. And Yeah, there's like an actual... There's an actual condition. Like condition, yeah. right? Yeah, and, it, and it comes proven. on with stress. Exactly. Like where you actually start sweating or blood comes Now, on. if we believe in Leviticus that the Bible says... Uh, and we do believe it, that the life is in the blood. There's this theme that anything that the blood of Jesus, the perfect sacrifice touches, gets redeemed. Boom. It's covered. It's atoned. Well, you go back to Genesis and you look at the first curse put on Adam and God says, by the sweat of your brow, you will earn your bread. And then hmm. the next thing he says, the thorns and the thistles will choke out your efforts, basically. Huh. It'll be really hard. So here's Jesus in the Garden of Gethsemane, the beginning of Passion Week. And the first thing that his blood touches is sweat mingles huh. possibly redeeming the first curse second thing thorn a crown of thorns are put around his head and they hit it with a reed which is a symbol of authority and think of all the um the levels in society and how the the worldly authority oppresses us and makes our our way that we provide for ourselves and our families difficult they just make it extra difficult to be cruel there's a possibility that Jesus redeemed that for believers and that there is a kingdom way we can live that was sealed by his blood when he redeemed it through the thorns on his brow. Mm. Also, the brow is the place of where the crown sits, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, that's why they're mocking him with the crown. Mm -hmm. You go through mm -hmm. it and then you get all the way to the cat of nine tails and the scourges. And then we have a verse, it's in Peter, right? Where it says by the stripes or the scourges on his back, mm -hmm. we are healed, right? Right. And so there's some correlation there. And, and in fact, the word scourging right there in the New Testament is the same word that is used for the woman with the issue of blood, the same exact exact word. Really? Yeah. Yeah. So it's, um, it's, 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 you go through this entire thing and there's, um, I'm a little rusty cause it was like a two year ago research project or three year ago research, but there's even something when they're gambling over his clothes and his cloak, there is a, right. It says in Deuteronomy 28, I believe it's 28. It says, cursed is he who's, who's kid, you know, dies on a tree. That's why it had to be a cross. He's redeeming that curse for us. Mm -hmm. There is this theme where Jesus is just like redeeming old Testament mm -hmm. curses, fulfilling all of these wow. precious things for you. And for me, so yeah. the scourges, especially, I think, and I believe there could be something for our health. So, yeah, I was going to say, cause yeah. <laughs> then it starts to talk about when Paul's introducing this theme of communion or the Lord's supper, yeah. he says, let's pull it up real quick. Yeah. It, yeah. First Corinthians 10, I believe. Mm -hmm. Right. If you eat of this bread and drink of this wine in an unworthy way without discerning the, the body and the blood. He says, this is why so many of you are sick and dying. It's, uh, weak, sick, and die early, essentially. Yeah. So, that they don't discern the difference between the cup and the bread. So the cup is the blood of the new covenant shed for you. That's, we would all agree, like Orthodox, like that is what it represents. We also would agree that it, the bread represents his body because he says, take this, my body broken for you, right? Mm -hmm. Then another part, he tells the Pharisees, anytime you eat this, you're chewing my flesh, right? And so, so we know that it represents his body. By the way, they take the stalk of wheat, they crush it, they grind it, right? And and then it gets baked into bread. And of course, the bread that they were breaking around the Passover table had no what in it? No yeast, no leaven. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And leaven is the symbol of sin. I mean, we all agree that the communion bread is a symbol of Jesus's body. And so why would Paul connect the dots in communion and say, unless you discern these two, the reason that many of you are weak and sick and die early is because you don't discern the difference between the cup and the bread. So maybe a way to look at the next time you take communion is thank him for his sacrifice on the cross and then thank him for allowing his body to be broken so yours could be made whole and then receive and and here here's why i don't think it's so crazy the entire world was plunged into sin this is in first corinthians 15 the a sin entered through one man what was the act of sin eating hmm. why wouldn't he restore so many things through the act of eating hmm you ever put that together You're like like why not the, the entire world got plunged into sin through one disobedient act of eating. What about one obedient act of eating? 
Yeah. And both, and both were really founded. It wasn't just this thoughtless act of eating. It was eating that was based in some form of faith in something. Yeah. Which in the first case was, yeah. yeah. In the first case was choosing to distrust God's voice and Mm -hmm. what he said about them and Mm -hmm. choosing to to really trust the voice of the enemy. And so they ate, which was a representation of of not trusting God and basically wanting to become their own God. Yeah. Because if you eat this, you'll be like God, knowing mm-hmm. both good and evil. Mm-hmm. And so God's why, withholding something why, from you. You should yeah. eat and attain it. How beautiful why would it be? Why communion is like, is, has always been central to the church. That's right. Is that it's our common union together, but that it is the foundation of what we believe that we're coming into agreement that when we eat that it's 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 a faith in saying mm-hmm. i recognize what you've done come on i remember it and i receive what it accomplished for me that's right and so uh here's the passage it wasn't first corinthians 10 it's first corinthians 11 we were so off i know so you know you got to practice being a thematic <laughs> you, you do <laughs> but this is you know this is what it's about i gotta brush up on all my references honestly for what i received from the lord i delivered to you that the lord on the night that he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, he took the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. That's a new agreement, like mm-hmm. a new legal yeah. agreement between God and man. Mm-hmm. Excuse me. Do this as often as you drink of it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat of this this bread and drink of this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until, until he, he comes. comes. Whoever therefore eats the bread and drinks the cup of the Lord in an unworthy manner will be guilty concerning the body and the blood of the Lord. Let a person examine himself then, and so eat the bread and drink the cup. For anyone who eats and drinks without discerning the body eats and drinks judgment on himself. That's why many of you are weak and ill and some have died. So is it your contention or, you know, your belief that when it's, like the, well, this scripture about... scared the heck out of me when I was young, <laughs> so no, I, I really like, oh. studied it. Um, but yeah, so my contention is, I believe the unworthy manner that you would take communion. I think there's multiple unworthy ways, but the, you know, you could do it in in the wrong heart, and you could do it mockingly, and that would be the wrong unworthy way. Yeah. But the specific way Paul is talking about, I believe, because he mentions it, is therefore any of you who do this without discerning the body. Mm. There was a problem in the early church too, that people would come and they would drink too much wine and eat too right. much food around the he's communion like, table. He's drunk. What are and you so, so you'll see a lot in commentaries like, oh, he's addressing that. I think he's addressing both. He's, he's saying that the wine in this moment is holy. I don't, I don't believe in trans um, substantiation. substantiation. I don't believe it's actually the blood and actually, so that is not my personal belief. I believe it is meant to be symbolic. It is meant to be revered. Um, um, I believe that it's m- meant for a reminder and for a way for us to participate in a sacrament. That's why it's still a sacrament. So it's a way for us to put our, so you our faith and belief you, into action and participate. You only believe that it's a symbol. You don't believe that there's anything uh, of substance that happens. Oh, no, I didn't say that. Okay. I just, but I'm just referring to the, I, there are, there's whole segments of Christianity that believes that once it's prayed over, it becomes no, something other than yeah. wine. So Transubstantiation, saying, but yeah. there's another term, consubstantiation. Uh, imbued with meaning and has power. Yes, I do believe okay, that. Yeah, me yeah. too. Like I, I, I believe it's 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 set something apart. more than just oh, I'm just remembering something that happened. That, yeah, that there's some God is showing up in that moment, but I don't believe it's like blood and flesh. E- e- correct. Right? Yeah. Okay, so we're on yeah. the same page. There. Yeah, we are. Um, so, so getting back to the the idea between the cross and the post. The post being the thing yeah. that Jesus went to the post to be whipped. And beaten. Right? Yeah, they so, chained his hands to a post about three and a half feet tall, and he couldn't get away. And they gave him as many lashes that were allowed under Roman law minus one. It right. was basically like what they thought would kill you yeah. minus one. They believed that forty lashes would kill would you, kill a man. and so they'd always whip you thirty nine times. Well, very few people actually got uh, Jesus was one of them. It was a handful. I mean, it was like Paul uh, got it too. Yeah, Paul got it. But so that so that's the idea here is that the cross is central. The resurrection is central, but there's so much not just to be remembered, but to be received Come on. in yeah. recognizing that Jesus poured out his blood on the cross, 
but also went to the post and was whipped and striped. And like you referenced, Peter talks about by his stripes were healed. Isaiah um, talks about he took our illnesses and bore our diseases. And then Matthew 8, when Jesus heals Mary, it specifically says, quote, this Matthew 8, 17, this was to fulfill what was, what was spoken by the prophet Isaiah. He took our illnesses and bore our diseases. So Correct. what Jesus he accomplished mm-hmm. is, yeah, biblically is connected to healing. Physical it's the healing. same reason why the matzah, the bread that represents Jesus, is pierced and striped. Right, right, the, right. Three stripes, right? Yeah. That's why. Yeah. Well, beautiful. We got to close this episode, but it's Resurrection Sunday. Um, I don't know if there's anything else you want to add. I just would say let your heart just glory in who Jesus Mm -hmm. is. And if you don't know him, that you would give your life to him in faith because he accomplished everything for you. There's nothing that we could do. We're all I'm confident we're just scratching the surface. Oh, man. I'm confident. We could have. I'm confident there's so much that Craig or myself or other people who really attempt to study the word i am confident there's so much more we don't know that was accomplished at the atonement um that we'll probably know in full when we're face to face with him but what was what we do know that was accomplished is the the god all heaven gave the best they had in jesus yeah and he gave the best he had for you and um i believe well we know there's eternal life we know that your eternal life begins now yeah and there's moments of heaven you can have here on earth because right. of this sacrifice and possibly um there's a lot connected with communion and the posts that we could like study out together but i encourage you to pray about it and ask the lord yourself what it means and what it means for you but i believe that there's some really great promises in there beautiful so wildcat 9981 thank you for the question yeah. jesus did come to die for you he also came to raise for you that you might have life and life abundant Amen. so everybody thank you for joining us thank today you. if you would do us a favor and leave a, a rating wherever you listen to this uh, it just helps get the word out and share this with somebody it's resurrection weekend and we one thing that we exist to do is help get the word out and we need you to do that that yeah. everybody would know jesus and his great love for humanity so thanks for sharing And we'll see you next time. God bless you.